Hello and welcome to this edition of Big Fish Small Pod for Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. And if you are new to the Small Pod, here we like to give you all the information about the Marlins for that particular day all season long in 10 minutes or less. And Marlins fans, I am continuing the series of free agents the Marlins could potentially target this offseason. We did catchers. We did infielders. And now it is time for the outfielders. Again, with this position, it is going to be very difficult to how Marlins target these positions. But here are some players I would like to see the Marlins potentially look at. Obviously, with the outfielders, players that would not be targeted by the Marlins, Teoscar Hernandez, Cody Bellinger. Um, maybe potentially like Jock Peterson, players like that. But with this position, the Marlins do need some help as Avi Garcia has not been it. Um, Brian De La Cruz, you never know if he's going to hit 300 one month or he's going to hit 150. Very inconsistent. And with Jesus Sanchez, probably has the most potential. But again, Injury prone and can be very inconsistent at times. And we have Jazz Chisholm, who, when healthy, is an all-star caliber, caliber player. Could give you 30-30 when healthy. But the thing is, when healthy. So I'm going to give you guys, give you guys the listeners, some players the Marlins can't potentially target in the outfield. And first up. We're going to go ahead and start with Joey Gallo. Yes, you might be hearing this Joey Gallo. You just talked about batting average when Brian, Brian De La Cruz. But with Joey Gallo, you are getting, you know, obviously batting average. He's not going to hit 250, 280. 250 would be a dream come true of the Marlins to get that out of Joey Gallo. He's going to hit 200, 220 at best. But what he is, he's going to slug the baseball. This is a home run hitter. Boom or buffed as it gets. He's a three true outcomes guy. He's either going to walk. He's going to strike out, or he's going to go and hit the long bomb. A high fly right field and deep. Joey Gallo's second of the night into the second deck, and the Twins have broken it open. First homer tonight was a homer in only four ballparks. That one? You can't find a park that that's not a homer in. Holy cow. With the Minnesota Twins last season, after having a very disappointing year in 2022 with the Dodgers, and the Yankees had one of his better seasons. Um, really great in terms of look at Jerry Gallo and how he played with the other teams. Um, again, only 111 games played. He was injured for some some time. But again, a 741 OPS, 21 home runs, which was his most since 2021. And with Joey Gallo, obviously you're getting those home runs. But defensively, he is one of the better outfielders in baseball. He has one of the strongest arms, and for the Marlins, they could potentially get him and slot him into an outfielder spot when needed, but of course would primarily be the DH and taking in place of Jorge Soler. Gallo should be cheaper than maybe what Jorge Soler is getting, and again, you can give Joey Gallo a one-year deal if it if you please it, and it will not be over $10 million. He got one for 11 last year with the Twins. I expect it to maybe be one year potentially anywhere from seven to ten million dollars for Joey Gallo. So that is player number one. Another player just got a ring with the Rangers, and that is Travis Jankowski. You might be saying, who? Well, Travis Jankowski made a name for himself in this postseason, especially in the World Series. This is a guy who would not be expensive at all, only signed a $1.25 million contract last season. But again, with the way he performed in the postseason and his potential as well um, that he can give you, he's older, 32, so years would not be the, would not be it. Um, again, another one-year deal, maybe a two-year deal with that second year, maybe potentially being a club option. And with Travis Kankowski, he could give you that that extra outfielder for the Marlins. Again, signing him, who primarily might have to be a fourth outfielder, kind of like a Garrett Hampson type role, but in the outfield. And when he did play, he was not bad at all. 263 batting average. He's not going to strike out when at the plate, 42 strikeouts um, in 247 at-bats. This is a guy who, again, went off in the World Series, had a really great um, series there, and just coming in after Adolis Garcia got injured. You look at 2023, his uh, 
his entirety of that um that series with the Arizona. He played in three games, but had an 804 OPS. He had two RBIs. And I think with Travis Gankowski, it only give him more time. He has not played that many games, so maybe not much wear and tear on his body. Only 107 with Texas. And I think with the Marlins, it will be potentially not bad to give him a shot. A very underrated name for the Marlins. The next one, Hunter Renfro. Not the Raiders wide receiver, but the right fielder who went from the Angels and then he was waived and went to Cincinnati and did not fare well. Hunter Renfro, his metrics have not been great at all. But with Hunter Renfro, again, as like Joey Gallo, you are going to get those home runs. He will strike out a ton. But again, those home runs and that slugging can be valuable. Um, Again, with his high OPS, his on-base percentage is not going to be the best. If he gets over 300, then that is a good year for Hunter Renfro. And you just look at him. Obviously, defensively, has not been great at all. Um, last season, with his, he had a, a negative 1.0 war. Defensively, offensively, not the best of years. But again, with Hunter Renfro, it will be another one-year type deal, kind of as a prove-it deal to have him there as maybe a potential splitting DH, fourth outfielder type role, and just in case someone gets hurt. Would not cost a lot for the Marlins. And a potentially, again, underrated player. And here's a nice one, too. A bit older, the oldest one in this group, Jason Hayward, who had, you could say, a comeback year with the Dodgers. He had a 2.0 war, 1.9, you could say, um, his highest war since 2019 with the Cubbies. And a really great year he had with the Dodgers. He might be more inclined to stay with the Dodgers just because how well he played. But again, this is someone who's been in the league a long time time could potentially want more money he had an 813 ops he was slugging the baseball 269 at batting average his highest there since 2018 on base percentage over 340 his highest since 2020 a really great year for jason haywood and you can always have that veteran presence jason haywood again last season played 124 games you can get the same amount equal or less from him in the marlins and if i'm you know, injuries are going to happen, knock on wood, that they do. But you have to, always might have to think, like, what if this player gets down? What if something happens to the outfield? And with that, Jason Hayward could step in, and you'll get quality quality play offensively. Defensively, you're going to get as good as you would think, a little bit below average. But for what the Marlins could be potentially paying him and what they could obviously expect from Jason Haywood, I would think that it will be a really good signing to get him. Again, an older guy, a veteran, could go and teach the young guys. He could teach DLC, Jesus Sanchez, Jazz Chisholm, just what it means to play in the outfield and offensively because he is one of those accomplished players in baseball and a guy you want around in the clubhouse. A guy who can mentor not just the outfield, but it seemingly everyone. He will go in there and he'll instantly be, everyone will view him as a leader type role, a veteran, someone to respect. And the last player will be quite expensive. We had his brother last, or excuse me, the Marlins had his brother last season. And I'm obviously talking about Lourdes Goriel Jr., with a 3.0 war, had an all star season with the Arizona Diamondbacks. You look at him, 24 home runs, 82 RBI, 772 OPS, only 30 years old. So again, this type of contract might have to be four years, around $50 million. And with him, I believe it's something that could potentially be done. You look at his World Series, he had a really good World Series, 850 OPS. Um, You look at his fielding, again, a little bit above average overall in his entirety of his career, including how he went... The Arizona completely changed him from when he was with the Blue Jays to Arizona Diamondbacks. But uh, a guy that could potentially benefit from playing here in Miami, obviously Cuban. So you always have that in background. He might be more inclined to sign with the Marlins. And it's something that could potentially be a, an improvement for everyone in the team and you look at his platoon splits in 2023 he mashed against left-handed pitching which has always been something that the marlins have desperately needed um you, uh, he had 301 batting average 815 ops and even if you look at him versus righties 
Still not bad. Again, not not getting on base as much as you would like to see against right-handed pitching. But what you're getting from him offensively with the home runs, the hitting, um, that is something that the Marlins could sacrifice. And I, I think Lourdes Gurriel would be a very nice signing for the Marlins. And that's going to do it for outfielders. Lourdes Gurriel, Jason Hayward, Hunter Renfro, Travis Jankowski, and Joey Gallo. This has been Big Fish, Small Pod. As always, go fish.